So y'all know we've been telling you about a special guest for a very long time. Uh, she was supposed to show up and when he got uh, blown out by the storm, I can say that uh, this woman is so phenomenal. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting her through my and working with her many times through uh, my other job, Metromorphosis, and, and my, my mentor, Mr. Jetson, um, and to watch the amount of change that has happened in this city uh, because of this woman. And while I have, I have never voted in Baton Rouge before, I had voted this time as my first time, and I was very happy to cast my vote for this woman. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please give a virtual shout out, hand clap, praise, play some Beyonce in your head to get you hyped up for our mayor, Mayor Sharon Weston Broom. Madam Mayor, how are you? I'm well, I'm well, I'm well. Good to see you, good to see you. Happy Saturday to everybody. It's happy Saturday to you and thank you so much for joining us and agreeing to do to have this conversation. Um, so first of all, how are you? How's the campaign? How are you feeling? I, I feel great. I've already had a, a wonderful um, Saturday greeting some Southern University students who are uh, doing some civic engagement today. Uh, looking out of my window here and I and see a lot of people uh, enthusiastic about going to early boat, seeing lines, uh, having great conversations with people. So it's been a great day already. And what is it? It's not even, it's just 12 o'clock. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so guys, we only got a few minutes with the mayor, but please feel free to drop your questions in the chat. I will try to get to as many as I possibly can. Um, but let's just start off with the basics, Madam Mayor. So. What's your beginning? Why did you why did you decide to lead? Did you feel it was a calling or did you feel it was something that um, no black woman had ever done before and that you were just the person for the job? So I absolutely unequivocally feel that uh, my becoming mayor was part of the path of my calling in life to public service. I always say that uh, this calling to public service in the form of elected office is a little different because I offer myself up to lead, to serve, and then the citizens have to choose if they want me to be their uh, leader and their servant. And so it's a, it's a little unique calling, but uh, unequivocally, it is a call that I uh, received uh, much before any of you all were born, years before you were born. Uh, I remember it very distinctly, sitting in front of my television set, becoming frustrated, like many young people are today with the uh, lack of progress I saw in my community, and uh, uh, distinctly remember a small voice saying, you can help do something about this. And so I, did, I offered myself up for public service, and I will tell you, um, I don't adhere to, uh, and I certainly uh, dismantle the term of a career politician. Don't see myself like that. Don't receive it, don't embrace it. I see myself as a public serv servant and I see my involvement in the political arena as one that has evolved into a, a life of public service. Thank you. Um... I've seen a lot of the work that you're doing around town to help families in need and, and particularly in the North Baton Rouge community. Can you talk about some of the policies that your administration has put into place that help those areas and then how kids and, and students and young people can, can be involved and immerse themselves in that work as well? Well, first of all, um, I will start by saying when I came into office, my mayor's summer youth program was limited to about 100, maybe 150 students, if that max. And that was not acceptable for me with a parish of over 450,000 people. So every year we elevated the numbers uh, by 100, then 200, then you know we got up to 500. This year, had it not been for uh, the pandemic, we would have attained 1,000. But even in the midst of a pandemic, we have stood up our mayor's youth workforce experience that has impacted 
young people in North Baton Rouge and other areas of our city, uh, not during just the summertime, but throughout uh, the year. So that is one thing. Secondly, I have been very committed to uplifting disinvested communities such as North Baton Rouge. And we've done that through uh, public-private partnerships, uh, working to bring more investment, uh, like projects like the Howell Place project. And then soon, a uh, project I'm so excited about is the Plank Road Corridor Project, which is going to transform Plank Road, a major thoroughfare from Harding Boulevard to uh, almost 22nd Street, I believe. And we're going to see revitalization. We're going to uh, see a bus rapid transit that will uh, take people all the way from a, a nine mile, mile stretch from Harding Boulevard. So um, those are just some. And then we're going to be transforming another corridor in uh, North Baton Rouge, the Ardendale area through our choice neighborhood projects. And lastly, I'll just say this, because I could go on and on and on when we talk about empowering families. Our Cradle to K project, which has been focused on uh, parents who are new parents, who have children who are in that zero to three category and try to make sure that we put them on a trajectory of success, connected them also to our Head Start program. Thank you, thank you. Um, all of those things are magnificent. I'm specifically excited about uh, the Plank Road corridor as I am, I am too young to remember anything but Plank Road as it is right now. And so I am very excited to see how that changes over the next few years. Um, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about is you're, you're the first black mayor of Baton, black female mayor of Baton Rouge. Um, and there are so many, we see so many black female mayors coming up uh, around the country. Uh, how did you, how did you make a space for yourself in such a political world and, and less importantly, but I still think it's important to talk about how can we as men and specifically black men make more space at the table for uh, black women and women of color and from, from your perspective? Well, first of all, I, I am very uh, humbled and privileged to be among uh, African-American female mayors. who We almost all came in at the same uh, time. Uh, uh, and I would say that there's a sisterhood that exists among us. Um, you know, mayors like London Breed of San Francisco, my dear sister mayor next door, uh, Latoya, uh, Cantrell in New Orleans, who I communicate with on a regular basis, uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms, the mayor of, of DC. So we, we all have a, a sisterhood. And while we represent different cities of different sizes, there are some common threads that we as African-American women in leadership uh, certainly uh, recognize. And some of those threads are that uh, because African-American women have not uh, been historically in high profile positions as mayor, where we are the CEO of a city, of a, uh, for me, of a city and a parish, uh, it is taking some people some time to wrap their minds around that, right? And uh, we are still in the 21st century working as we lead to dismantle stereotypes that, Af that have been attached to African-American women. You know, last night I, I stayed up a little late. I was having a little trouble going to sleep. And I uh, took the opportunity to look at the first lady's video on our for former first lady, Michelle Obama. Mm -hmm. And just watching her journey uh, from being a career woman to becoming the first lady and how she had to be cognizant of what she said, how she dressed, and how all these labels and stereotypes were attached to her just for being passionate when she talked and having to avoid being labeled an angry black woman, wearing a sleeveless dress where other first ladies had worn them, but somehow because she wore it, took on a whole different, you know, signal and message. And so I, I take my role very seriously in terms of delivering for the city and parish, but I also recognize that I am a, a symbol of African-American womanhood and that, as we would say, I have to represent. 
Now, as it relates to African-American men, I will tell you that I feel enormously blessed as the CEO of this city and parish that I have had partnerships with African-American men who have stood with me through the test of time, have encouraged me, have been collaborator collaborators at the table. And so I always say that there's room for all of us, that we don't have to compete, we can complete one another. And so uh, I, I consider myself a mentor to African-American women, to African-American men, and just to women and men in general. Thank you. Uh, to the, to the students and the trainees in the room, if you were part of the mayor's uh, summer work program, go ahead and drop a just quick yes in the chat so we can make sure that you are represented and we get to tell her hey on your behalf. Uh, mayor, one of the questions that has been posed by, uh, let's see who this is, uh, Johnny Ellis and Daniel, is how has the pandemic affected what you can do to put your name out and help the community? Well, I don't think any of us expected a pandemic would hit us in 2020. The pandemic has uh, demonstrated or afforded an opportunity for me as a leader to certainly step up to the plate, uh, regardless of uh, popularity uh, or, or trying to win popularity or pleasing everybody. This uh, uh, pandemic certainly has been a crisis where I have had to make some tough decisions, uh, but make some proactive decisions as well that I believe has put us in a position today where we're seeing progress in terms of our numbers going down and, and, and our success rate improving. So first of all, when we, we were just talking the other day, yesterday actually with some of my team members and we remember a young man who we love so dearly, he came into our office, um, in March and he had on a mask and this was before people were wearing masks and he brought us a mask and it was right after he came into our office that week, that next week that we had to start uh, shutting down large events like St. Patrick's Day parade and concerts, et cetera. And then we also had to stand up a, uh, a uh, testing site without any federal funding, any state funding, and so from there, we, I went on to uh, surround myself with uh, medical professionals who provided me with data and research. And that has led uh, my decision-making process, recognizing that we can look out for the health and well-being of our citizens and also uh, look out for our economy. They don't have to be mutually exclusive, but it does take strategy and intentionality intentionality uh, for that to, to happen. Um, it's, it's now October, uh, the pandemic is still with us. And, and I believe until we have a vaccine, we still have to demonstrate mitigation practices such as wearing a mask, being masked up, wearing our mask, uh, making sure that we practice social distancing and practice good hygiene. So uh, while we are now in phase three, we cannot be complacent, nor can we relax. Uh, as I heard the governor say, we may be done with COVID-19, but COVID-19 is not done with us. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and you do have a couple of kids in here who were in the uh, your, your mayor's youth program. So shout out to y'all. Glad y'all got to relive a moment real quick. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Uh, I want you to give us your honest answers as quickly as you can. Don't think too much. All okay. right. Let's see. Uh, what's your favorite word? Love. What's your least favorite word? Hate. Your favorite sound? Piano. Your least favorite sound? Uh, jackhammer. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> uh, what excites you? Family and friends. And what bores you? Negativity. What profession besides your current would you like to attempt? Author and speaker. What profession other than your own would you least like to attempt? I am thinking much 
too long. Oh, uh, uh, scientists. <laughs> okay. And um, and this actually segues ways into the, a really good question. We got about three minutes left with the mayor. Uh, so if heaven exists, what would you like hear, like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Uh, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yes, the, the classic. That's the, that's the classic there. So looking down the line, the election is uh, two or three, two, two weeks, less than two weeks away? At this 10 days, 10, 10 days. 10 days away. We're seeing record, um, we're seeing record turnout, uh, not just here, but across the country. Uh, what would you like to say to, you know, the kids about who can't vote now, but will be voting in the future about the importance of voting uh, and, and how you see this playing out o over the tenure of your, your mayorship? Well, I certainly encourage our young people, even if you cannot vote, to encourage your family, your friends to vote and tell them your future is riding on this election and their vote. So make sure that your parents, your friends, your family, anybody that you come in contact with who can vote, make sure that they go out and vote. We are in a moment in history uh, where this election is going to be pivotal to our future, your future, and your success uh, on a local level and also on a federal or national level. So um, I encourage you, even though you can't vote, find out the, about the candidates. You know about me, you know my history, you know what I've done, but do a little bit more research because I think it's vitally important that, you be, that you're able to stand up for who you believe and what you believe. Thank you. And uh, last question, last question before you get out of here. Um, sitting across the desk from you right now is is 16 year old Sharon Weston Broom. Uh, what do you tell her? Sharon, maximize every moment. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. I thoroughly enjoyed it. A highlight of my day. Absolutely. Everybody give it up for Amazing. the Amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah.